when you're looking up at the canopy, what you're seeing is the subtle swarm-like motion of the tensegrity struts and hearing the compressed air sounds, the solenoid clicks and the collisions of the stainless steel. I've always been interested in alternative anatomical architectures, how the body has evolved and become operational and aware in the world, and, and now augmented by its instruments, its machines, its computational systems, the body has been extended beyond the boundaries of its skin. The title of this installation is Anthropomorphic Machine. It's not figurative. It's anthropomorphic because it has a skeletal tensegrity structure. It has pneumatic rubber muscles, steel tendons. It has a circulatory system of compressed air, pneumatic lungs and it has a vision and computational system for its responsiveness. So Stellark's art and his performances are often viewed through the lens of what we know to be post-humanism. Post-humanism serves as a challenge to the artificial distinctions we've historically held up when trying to define what it is to be human. Distinctions from technology, from machines, from animals. So we know what is human. Human is not machine, human is not animal. That's one of the ways we define who we are. But Stellark's practice and the theories of post-humanism really clearly pose a challenge to that. I'm particularly interested in how art can ask us as an audience to look again at the assumptions that we hold and the things that we think we know. And the conversations I've been part of in the early stages of the development of the anthropomorphic machine have really revealed to me more and more that Stellark's practice is remarkably prescient and revelatory in that respect. His art making asks us to look again are amalgamated existences entangled equally in technology and in nature. For me, those early discussions and the work itself, you kind of start to think, am I so very different from that? Eight metres high, seven metres in diameter, 498 stainless steel struts. I always indicate that ideas are easy. But to actualise those ideas often takes a collaboration between programmers, between engineers, and that's what was needed here. This project is two years in the making and is a synthesis of multidisciplinary knowledge both across design and engineering. Together with Paul Lowe, we've been collaborating with Stellark on this project from design concept to fabricating early prototypes. I've always been interested in looking at the relationship between structures and body. We have for a number of years now, we've been on teaching program to look at how to design structures around the body, literally. Um, as a form of articulation, as a kind of a, a second skin. The first prototype we made was with the AA Visiting School with a bunch of students. We investigated tensegrity structures using elastic with aluminium tubes and introduced pneumatic muscles within the structure. This is very much an experiment. This is a project that is not about realizing what is already being known. This project has many challenges, in particular the immense scale of the installation. 
Now there are over 200 cells controlled by 12 muscles, each 1.2 meters long, and all of this is elevated over eight meters in the air. So my field of research is called human-computer interaction, uh, which broadly defines any effort in understanding how we use technology and how we could design better interaction with technologies. Our major challenge here is to design a mapping between the uh, audience movement and the machine behavior. And that mapping would need to be able to give the audience agency over the interaction for them to feel that they are really triggering something from the machine. But at the same time, it also cannot be a too obvious, uh, like a one-to-one -one mapping between the uh, set of gestures and the machine behaviors, because that would just keep the audience from further exploring and uh, it would make it more of a boring experience. So it's really a fine balance between these two extremes that we uh, would need to find out. So when anyone approaches the installation, the vision system captures them, and depending on the position, the distribution, and the dynamics of the people underneath the structure, will result in how the machine responds. If no one is in the vicinity of the machine, it'll intermittently twitch <laughs> to kind of indicate an aliveness. I really enjoy observing people around and how they interact with the, um, the anthropomorphic machines. I've been a big fan of Stellar practice for a long time, and I really like how this kind of work asks us to rethink how we view the world. So oftentimes we hold up a distinction between humans and other forms of life or other other forms in the universe and to have that being it feels very alive it feels very it feels very organic in its movements and in its form and um, despite the fact it is very much metal and computer and and synthetic parts Art is not about information, it's about generating experiences that enrich what it means to be human.